Thems all know, thems all know. If you want to be really dead, like girl, me I got dead, can't be. Wow. Yeah, Good morning, everyone. Uh, we are supposed to be starting at 11. Good morning. We will just uh, give ourselves about five minutes since we see a lot of people joining in. I believe that we can start around 11.05. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
sorry, sir, 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 hey. I was too grand, I'm in the mood. 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 I'm
I said, my baby Fiona, I could play you like my daughter. I believe you so much, dear. I need somebody. Is it the kind of somebody? Ah, somebody. Anything for you, baby. I'm supposed to be your man. I don't go for your hand. Why the rain is pouring, girl? I'm longing for you. Baby, get me understand. Are you never there around? If I'm on, I should go by. Tell me what I'm for do. Yeah. Oh, that baby, I'm in mean, some that baby, that baby, oh, that baby, I oh, dare with that baby, baby, baby oh, that baby, I'm in mean, some that baby, that baby, oh, that baby, I dare with that baby, that baby. Oh, that baby. Oh, that baby. Oh, that baby. girl, I want to play your skin, girl, I want to get outside, you should be here with me. Oh, girl, body bad, oh, cause you've been running through my mind. If I don't die, if I don't die, you'll be running through my mind, running through my mind. If I don't die, if I don't die, too tight for you, too tight for you to stay with you. I feel buy thirty acres, if not to buy thirty acres. Girl, if I lie to you, please tell the truth. Bad company, mess up good manners. To make a be your bubble, oh, to your papa, oh, you be running through my mind, running through my mind, if I don't die, if I don't die, you be running through my mind, running through my mind, if I don't die, if I don't die, yeah, 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 you too much in my baby, baby, you do die away. I get a girl like the diver. I get a girl like the sing for. Fifty girls on default. But now you be the one I go kill for. Baby girl, you be jailer. I won't come for me, no go leave me home. You be one in a million. Baby, top of my million. See, like we be baby. I'm my own, my own, my own. That every day you get a fire, fire, fire. See, my baby, my love, my love, my girl. She said, Yeah, 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 Go, 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 shine it. Girl, it's your day to go, 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 shine it. You know it's your body, go, 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 shine it. Yeah, it's your body, go, 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 shine it. You know it's your body, I'm all in it, I'm all in it. First dream, I'm all in it.
morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Access Bands Kids webinar series. Please, may I know if you can all hear me? You can just show by hand if you can hear me. Yes, we can. Hi, Taka. Hello. Okay, yes, so my name is Hi, Hi Joseph. Okay. Hello, All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's great. Um, my name is Josephine Eva Arthur, a proud staff of Access Bank Ghana. Um, you are all warmly welcome to the first ever um, Access Bank's Kids webinar series. Okay, uh, it's the first of its kind in Ghana, basically, um, and of course, brought to you by yours truly, Access Bank, the bank for families. Okay, um, this webinar series actually forms part of our um, uh, early, early, early savers promo that we are running, which we call the perfect start promo. So if you can look behind me, you'd see that I have a nice banner there, you know, show, show, showcasing uh, what the promo is about. Of course, I'll give you more information about it. But before we start, um, I believe that uh, you need to know this, that at Access Bank, we believe in helping people achieve their goals, their aspirations, and definitely it reflects in our various financial and non-financial products and services that we offer to everyone, families, women, uh, senior citizens, in fact, the youth, everyone at large, okay? And we are very, very happy to host all of you, moms, dads, our early savers, both existing and prospective ones from all over Ghana. We say welcome to the first ever Access Bank Kids webinar series. So before we, we, we actually call on Dinah, the head of inclusive banking, to give us a, an opening prayer, uh, we are going to first go into the rules of the day. Okay, I believe that we have some early savers on the line. We have parents on the line as well. So we have to manage both audiences. So uh, since the program is virtual, we need you to listen with rapt attention. Another thing that we need you to do, please, is to mute your microphones if you are not speaking. Uh, if you have any questions, any comments, you can definitely use the chat box. Um, feel free to use the chat box, like I've, I've said. Uh, we'll address all your comments at the appropriate time. Um, our early servers can put on their videos for us to, you know, have a feel of them, for us to see them. You are welcome to do that. We would appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, we'll call on... Um, Dinah, if you can pray with us, please. Dinah is our head of inclusive okay. banking. Thank you. Thank you, Josephine. Thank you. Uh, please, let's pray. Our dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for a morning like this. We thank you for life and the opportunity you have given us through Access Bank to learn and shape our future. We invite you into our midst as we start our first webinar series for children. We commit the facilitator into your hands. Help her deliver to make an impact in the lives of our children. We pray, O oh Lord, that we will be obedient children, listen to our parents and our mentors to be very prominent people in society. We pray for favor and protection. Bless us as we listen to our facilitator and see us through this session successfully. Thus we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen, amen. Thank you very much, Dinah. Okay. So what, 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 what is this webinar series all about? Okay, um, let me just give you a brief, a brief introduction. But before I do that, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of some key, key, key members of the Access Bank family. Uh, I know we have Abna Moa on the line. Um, we have Abna Moa online. Abna Moa is currently the Deputy MD of Ghana Stock Exchange. We have Andrea. Andrea is our head of legal uh, we have uh, Matilda Santiago and Yvonne Antonio. Both of them are group heads retail banking. I can see uh, Edward Blankson on the line. Edward works from our commercial banking uh, uh, group. Uh, he's one of the heads there. Uh, I can also see Nana Edusha Mante. Nana, welcome. Uh, Nana is the head of corporate uh, communications and brand management of Access Bank. And hello, Eddie, I can see your kids. I can see their videos. I hope you are going to have fun and learn. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Okay. So um, I believe that, um, I mean, we have both audiences, parents and children. 
uh, I'll first talk to the parents. Um, I know that when we were growing up, um, um, we, we did have a lot of wild dreams. You know, we had dreams, dreams that probably um, some have been achieved, some are yet to be achieved. But uh, one of the things that I know is that if, if, if we had the support and the backing that we as parents now are giving to our children, probably most of our dreams have been materialized more than what have been done currently. So uh, what we are saying is that just as we were kids, our, 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 our children are now kids. You know, our early savers are, are, are now kids. And, and, and they get to go through the process that we went through before we became who we are today. And um, they also have dreams. And, and no matter how small or audacious those dreams may sound, at Access Bank, we believe that they can still come to pass. So uh, what we are doing is to definitely help parents and guardian who desire to help their children achieve their dreams, uh, make that a reality. And, and we know that most of the dreams definitely, uh, uh, one of the core, core, core things or the key things that can help us realize our dreams has to do with financial soundness. So we believe that uh, no matter the age that we are in, I mean, from five to 17 years, that early age, we can inculcate the habit of good savings into these, our children, for them to turn out as billionaires, millionaires earlier in life than we have been able to do. So therefore, we started what we call the Access Bank perfect start promo is definitely a promotion that is aimed at inculcating the habits of savings in our children and and not just that but uh we believe that we can showcase the talents that children have especially children between the ages of five and 17 years in a fun educative interactive and also uh, 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 in, in an interactive way and not only that but also leveraging our early savers account uh, this promo actually started in in in, in September and is going to run for the period of six months um, we want to support supports families uh, realize the dreams of the awards so it definitely comes with, with some form of cash rewards and those rewards uh, are to be won on a weekly basis on a monthly basis and of course on a mega cash uh, rewards basis as well like i said earlier is the first of its kind in ghana i believe that especially in a time as this where uh, our kids you know the educational system has become you know a bit a bit a bit some way in quote um where the, 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 our children, you know, the routine that the daily routine that they are used to uh, has been has been has been affected in a way. We need to engage these our children more, and not just engagement, but in an educative uh, and interactive manner. That at the end of the day, they can learn even whilst they are on, pick up certain principles, certain ethics, and then uh, just apply it to their lives. So basically, that is what the promo is about. Thank you can you, get more information on the promo no, no, by going to yeah, our website, uh, oh, which is www.ghana.accessbank.com slash early savers. So uh, I would repeat that, www.ghana.accessbankplc.com slash early savers. If, if, if you're an early saver or an existing early saver in the, what I mean, by that is if you have an account already with a bank, that's great. Hey, if you don't, kindly pull, tack on mommy, tack on to daddy that right after this webinar, mommy or daddy is supposed to walk, take you to any of the Access Bank branches and is supposed to open an early savers account for you. So, um, okay, what's the topic for today? Um, uh, the topic actually got me thinking uh, what I wish I knew um, when I was younger. I believe that some of us have been through a lot that uh, and now you've learned differently from, you know, uh, 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 some of the perceptions and, and, and the ideas or, or, or how should I say it, uh, some beliefs that you had when you were growing up. And, and, and if you had known certain things, I believe that there are certain mistakes or certain things that you haven't, that you, you wouldn't have done in the past. Um, I believe that this webinar series gives us an opportunity for these, our young children, to, to, to get to know what we wish we would have known in the past now, just for them to apply it, you know, as part of, 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 of their training in life to definitely give them a better future. And uh, I think there is no other person who do justice to this topic uh, better than
a leadership and organizational development practitioner and coach. Hi, Taka. Hello. Hi, Taka, can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you very well. I hope you can hear me, Taka. Hi. Okay. So I'll just quickly do okay. that. Taka is actually the CEO of Busara Africa, a Pan-African um, leadership development firm. Um, she's a leadership trainer, a professional coach, and organizational development, uh, a specialist with over 20 years professional experience working with the civil society, the private sector, and various government agencies uh, within the East, West, and Southern Africa, as well as Europe and the US. Uh, she has a bachelor's degree in political science from Harvard University, Boston, MA, and a Jewish doctorate in law from Columbia University, New York. Uh, she currently sits on the board of the African Women's Development Fund. Uh, and the beauty is that she has two kids, uh, I think 10 and 12 years. So she, 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 she couldn't be, the, she's actually the perfect <laughs> person, you know, to take us through uh, 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 this, 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 this webinar. Um, I think uh, uh, um, she, 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 she has the expertise to actually, you know, speak to us for us to, get the needed uh, uh, um, uh, practices. Um, it's never too late to incorporate anyway uh, uh, new, new, new ethics, you know, new ideas to better our lives or to change our lives uh, to wherever we want to get to. So Taka, you are welcome uh, to the Access Bank Kids, Kids uh, webinar. I hope that uh, we learn more from you and at the end of the day, we get to take away some important information to help better our lives. Thank you, Taka. Over to you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Josephine. And thanks so much to the team at Access Bank and congratulations on this promo. What a fantastic, fantastic idea. So I, I, Josephine, it would be great if you just keep letting me know if you can hear me without breaking. When you were speaking, you were breaking a little bit. So I just want to make sure oh, my okay. internet is working okay. So just okay, alert me right. if at any point I start breaking. Yeah? Okay, so sure. Good, I'll do that. Yeah. good morning, parents. But more importantly, good morning to our wonderful children that are on this webinar. This is really a conversation with you. And what I hope to do this morning is share with you my secrets. Those things I really wished I had known when I was much younger. And I'm really happy to share those with you because I'm hoping that therefore you won't make some of the mistakes that many of us older people will have made. Huh? And they're that, not many of them, they're just five of them. So I'm gonna start sharing my screen. Again, Josephine, confirm with me when you're able to see my presentation, give me a second. Josephine, can you confirm that you can see my presentation? Yes, Taka, I can see. Excellent, great. Lydia so, can see. <laughs> yes. Okay, <laughs> brilliant. As well. Okay. Okay, brilliant. That's my colleague, Lydia. I always have a plan B in case there's an issue. She can also share the screen. So this morning, the five things I wish I knew when I was young. And let me start with a question. What, when you look at this picture, you know, look at this picture for a moment and think about who do you notice more? Either put it in the chat or unmute yourself. Can one of the children unmute themselves, maybe with the hope, with the support of their parents, and just share who do you notice more in this picture? Can someone unmute and share who do you notice more in this picture? The bird. I hear Which bird, dear? Which bird do you notice more? Blackbird. 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 The blackbird. Yeah, but they're all blackbirds. Which blackbird? Crow. The crow. 
I see many crows. Which of the crows do you notice more? Keep going. Which one do you notice more? Which of these black crows do you notice more? I suspect. Uh huh. Hello, I'm Casey. I noticed the one at the bottom more. Fantastic. The one at the bottom stands out. Thank you, thank you. Now you can all mute yourselves, huh? Go ahead and mute yourselves. Wonderful. And you got it right. It's the one at the bottom. And this brings me to the first thing I wished I knew when I was young. And that is to be yourself. You see, when I was young, I used to move around a lot. Huh? So at one point, you know, I'm originally from Uganda. I've been living in Ghana for about 16 years, but I was born in Uganda, Uganda and East Africa. And then at one point, my parents moved me to Kenya, also in East Africa. And there, you know how it is when you move to a new school, new friends, you're feeling like you don't fit in. Huh? Then parents moved me again to the UK. All our, fam our entire family moved to the UK. And once again, I was like, oh, I don't fit in with these British people. I wish I could be more like them so I wouldn't stand out. I wasn't trying to be myself. Again, my parents moved me from there back to Uganda. And I remember when we went back to Uganda, I used to have this British accent. I used to talk like this. And all the Ugandan children would make so much fun of me. And I just thought, oh my goodness, maybe I need to speak more like them so that they won't make so much fun of me. And so I could fit in better. So when I was young, I was always trying to fit in, to be like other people so I wouldn't seem so different. But the lesson I have learned now, the thing I wished I had known then was the importance of being yourself the importance of not trying to be like someone else. The real value in the fact that, and I know it's natural actually, that you want to be like others sometimes so that you can fit in, so that you can have. But when I back, I realized that at a certain time, I thought, oh, this is too hard. I can't be like all these other children. I can't talk like them. I can only talk like myself. And as soon as I started to do that, I got my real friends. So that was a big lesson to me about not trying to be like someone else, but ultimately being myself, being real, not being fake. But this is the key lesson as well about being yourself. And this is going back to the picture about the bird. And even the photo you see here of these beautiful ballerinas is that it's okay to be different. You know, so many times, and I think particularly when I was young, I was different. I had lived in different places. I'm from different countries that I was in, going to school in compared to some of my classmates. And I thought being different was bad. But now that I look back, I start to realize that actually it is when you're different that sometimes you stand out. You see from the picture, you see from the picture, it was the bird at the bottom that stood out. So I think my first lesson, the real first thing I wish I had known then, and I really encourage you all to take on yourself, is that you are uniquely you. You are beautifully you. Be yourself. And even if it means that being yourself is slightly different than others, continue to be yourself. I see, for instance, my daughter. My daughter, she talks, she talks plenty, plenty, plenty like me. And then my son is very quiet. He's a, a young man of few words. And at times I noticed that my daughter would like to be more like her brother. She's like, I don't want to be a talkative. I want to be more like, like, like my, my brother. And I always tell her, it's okay. It's okay. Just be fully you. So that's the first lesson. Be yourself, even if being yourself means that you're different. The second lesson is about following your passion. And remember this morning earlier, Access Bank was talking about your dreams and the importance of your dreams. Now, you know, when I was growing up, there was one thing I was very sure about. I wanted to 
fight for human rights and make sure everybody could make sure that they were able to enjoy their rights. And so I thought, okay, maybe one way to do that is to become a lawyer. So off I went to law school to pursue this passion of mine. And remember, my passion was indeed fighting for rights. But somehow, down the line, I lost that commitment to my passion. My job became more about the money I was making. A passion. A passion is something that you're so excited about. A passion is something you really enjoy doing. You see the picture of this little one who is painting? Maybe that's his passion. So your passion is something that you really, really enjoy doing. For some of you, it might be singing. Some of you might be dancing. Some of you might like playing with your Legos. Let those things that really interest you be a guide. And I invite you again to put yourself on mute. Let mommy or daddy help you put yourself on mute so that everybody can hear, or maybe the Access Bank folks can help us mute our participants. Love you. So this is about letting your career choice be driven by your passion. So you see, my passion was about changing the world, helping people fight for their human rights. But as I was telling the story, what happened was I forgot about that. I started to focus my career on the money I would make. And all it was about, okay, I need to make certain money. I need to make a certain amount of money. But in the end, what happened? I found that I was quite unhappy. I was quite miserable. So instead, I got back on track and said, what is it I really love doing? How can I make sure my career, my job is based on what I truly love doing? And then guess what happened? The money followed. I had enough money to support myself, to pay my rent, to pay my bills, put food on the table, take care of my children. So really, this is the key lesson. Love. Hello, Tucker. Hello, Taka. Okay, hello, Dana. Can you hear me? Hello, Diana, can you hear me? We can hear you just soon. Okay, all right. Thank you, Bevelyn. So I'll try and get Teka back on the line. The advisor should do it happens. Is for us to share in the chat box, I mean, some of the takeaways that we've, we've gotten so far. So just give us some few minutes. I'll try and get her back on the line. Thank you. Hello, Josephine. Yes, uh, hello. Diana, can you hear me? Yes, um, I can. Okay, that's good. So as we try to get Taka on the line, I think we can engage our early savers, okay? At least uh, Taka is going to talk to us about five key things that we wish we knew when we were younger. Uh, she's spoken about two things. So I want you mm. to use your chat box or use the video and tell us what you have learned from the two points so far. Is that okay? 
So if we can have somebody yes. tell us what he or she has learned, okay? You can put on your video or, or mute your microphone and then tell us. For me, right. I know I have learned to be myself, okay? Uh, he said we have, she said we have to be ourselves. We are unique. Great, okay, just letting so, you know I'm back. Huh? Okay. So sorry, oh, okay. but we can okay. still hear. Taka. All right, thank you. We we can okay. still hear right. in case there are right. any thank others. You, yes, I think we have uh, Benjamin saying so far, really have been educative. I've always tried to fit in a group. I always found myself in. Hello. Okay. Uh, it's very disheartening. Uh -huh. This is coming from Benjamin. Nice. I heard another okay. voice. There. All right, so I think. Okay. okay. It's okay to be yourself. And you have nice. to be nice. Great. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Can you see my screen again? Yes, I think we are going to go now. Oh, sincere yes. apologies. You know, technology is such a joy. <laughs> Okay, so I think that second message, um, the second lesson that I was talking about before I got disconnected was about following your passion. And there's something that has changed as well. You know, in the olden days, in my time, we thought that you would only have one career. The truth is, even when I look back, I have had five or six careers in my lifetime. So there's no such thing as, oh, I will be a doctor for life, I will be an accountant for life, or I will be an engineer for life. Increasingly, particularly if you follow your passion, you may be different things at different points. So I started out as a lawyer, and then I became a human rights activist. Then I became a development practitioner, and now, see me now, I am a trainer and leadership development coach. So follow your passion and it will change over time. So that's the second thing. Now, the third thing that I wished I had known when I was young. This is the idea is that your education will get you in the door. Your attitude will keep you in. So what do I mean by this? All of you children right now are very focused on your studies and it's fantastic, continue to study hard. That's what I did when I was young. I was so committed to my studies and as a result, I went to some of the best universities in the world and I'm very thankful and grateful for that. Going to places like Harvard and Columbia was fantastic. And indeed, going to those types of schools got me in the door. What do I mean? It meant that I was able to apply for jobs. And most likely when they looked on my CV and they said, ah, you went to Harvard, you went to Columbia, it increased my chances of getting the job. Even now, when I look for consultancies and they see where I've gone to school, they're like, ah, very nice. It helps me get the assignments. However, and this is the biggest lesson. I realize you need more than your education. It is your attitude that will keep you in the job. It is your attitude that will enable you to be successful when you get the job. It is your attitude that will help you keep the business when you get the business. And again, what do I mean by attitude first? your character. Huh? What's your work ethic? What's a work ethic is your ability to work hard, not the type of person when they give you a job, you just kind of do halfway, you don't really complete the task. Huh? But you are the kind of person when they give you a job, you do double. Huh? They call it sometimes under promising and over delivering. It means you go extra. You are the type of person who's respectful to others. That's character. You're the type of person who doesn't make excuses. When they ask you to get something done, you get it done. You don't come with long stories about why you couldn't get it done. You're the type of person who doesn't lie or cheat in the work that you do. That is your character. 
Your character is the thing that will make you successful once you have the job. And I will tell you this because as a leadership development person, so what my job is, is essentially to support people in positions of leadership, get better at what they do, to get better at their leadership. And many times I struggle because I think, oh my goodness, I can clearly see this person has all the education. They have a master's degree. They have an MBA, a master's in business administration. They have a PhD, they could even be doctor so-and-so, but, but their attitude is all wrong. And their attitude then prevents them from being better at their job. Their attitude prevents them from being good leaders, even though they have all the right education. So what I encourage you to really do is listen to mommy and daddy and your teachers, all of those people who are really helping you to develop your character. Because yes, your education matters, but it is your character that will help you be truly successful. In addition to this, attitude includes character, but it also includes increasingly um, the issue of your emotions. In my day, nobody would talk about something they call emotional intelligence. You know, in my day, it was all about IQ, how clever you are, you know, I, particularly when it comes to books. But today, and I wish I had known this before, today, those who are really successful in business and in their jobs are people who are able to manage their emotions. What do I mean? And I'm sure you've seen it sometimes. Huh? You see these big people who, when they get angry, they completely explode. They don't know how to manage their anger. Or when they get angry, they just keep quiet. They don't say anything, anything, even though they should maybe say a word or two. So managing your emotions and being sensitive to the emotions of others is also something that's so important and is important in addition to your education. And finally, getting on with others is also a very basic but critical thing that will help you in terms of success. I notice with my children now with their school, increasingly they put them in groups to work. And sometimes one of them will say, oh, this group work is too hard. The children are not listening to me. I just want to do the work on my own. But I get so happy when I see them being asked to do group work. Guess why? Because increasingly now in business and in jobs, it's those who can work in teams. It's those who can collaborate and get on with others who are more successful. So this is a remembrance and something I really wished I'd known. Yes, your education matters, but your attitude will matter even more. So that's the third. The fourth thing I wished I had known is that failure is not the opposite of success. So what do I mean by that? When I was young, I was so afraid of failure. You know, I was one of those high achieving, always trying to get the best in class. Huh? So if I didn't get 98%, if I didn't get 99%, if I even got 80%, oh, disaster. I would be so stressed, so worried. But now when I look back, because the truth is I could not always get 100%. I have had lots of failures. I have had lots of things that did not go as I had hoped. But when I look back, I realize that I have learned more. I have grown more from what I call those failures. So the truth is, and I wish I had known this before, that failure is actually the path to success. It's not the opposite of success. It's the path to success on one condition. You have to learn from your failure. You have to use your failure to get better. The true failure happens when you give up and stop trying. And, you know, I have seen many people my age who have somehow they've given up. They've thought, ah, now it's too late. I've tried this before. Oh, I can't do this. I may look bad. 
The truth is when you start something for the first time, and I used to do this when I was young, I'd be like, "Uh -uh, I can't do that. I will look awful. People will laugh at me. But guess what? The truth is when you start something from the first time, you will be clumsy. You will make mistakes. You will fail. But as long as you keep learning, you're on the path to success. So use failure to learn and get better. And you can see there's a quote from the Chinese philosopher, our greatest glory is not in never failing, but in rising every time we fail. And I'll come to the last thing I wished I had learned when I was young. And that is very closely tied to the reason that we're here today, the idea of having a savings culture. Wealth is not gained from earnings, it is gained from savings. You know, when I was young, I would see people who were so wealthy or people who were, who were earning a lot of money, particularly this thing of people who were earning a lot of money. They had big houses, flashy cars. They were always going on holiday. And I thought, Ooh, when I get big, I want to be like that. But then in time, I have noticed that there are people I have seen who have earned a lot of money. And you can think about it yourself. Some of those big entertainers, those stars, movie stars, singers, athletes, basketball players. But guess what? What I've noticed is they have earned a lot, but they have quickly gone through all of their money. So truly, your wealth comes not from earning so much money. That is one way. But if you earn all that money and spend it, then you don't actually get wealth. You have a high income, but not necessarily wealth. So how do you get wealth? From saying, and I wished I had known then that it's never too early or even too late to save. And the amount you save is never too little. You know, there's a story about this librarian. Um, he used to work in the library of the University of New Hampshire, and he worked there for almost 20 years or so. And of course, as a librarian, he didn't earn very much money. But when he died, he left $4 million to the university and $100,000 just to the library in which he worked. And how was he able to do that? because he saved a certain amount all the time. So it's not the amount you save, but it's the fact that it becomes a habit. So remember, it's not the amount, it's the fact that it becomes a habit. And I hope you all take advantage of the promo that Access Bank is doing. So those are the five things I wished I had learned. So now we can move to questions and answers. Thank you very much, Taka. So it's it's the Q and A session. Um, feel free uh, to use the chat box. Uh, parents, kindly guide your, your words. Uh, if you have any questions, just type it in the chat box or put it on your video, or mute your microphone, and then you can ask Taka any questions that you have. Okay. Uh, okay. I see a hand up. Nana, oh, I think we can take your question. Hello. Hello. Yes, dear. Go ahead. How do you know you're being yourself? Powerful question. How do you know you are being yourself? Wow, wow, wow. What a powerful question. One is to get to know yourself and to know the type of person that you are, what you like doing, huh? what you like doing, and whether, for instance, huh? 
and to, to know what you like doing and well, to know whether you are feeling happy or sad. One trick I always know is that when I am being myself, I feel happy. When I am not being myself, I kind of feel uncomfortable. You know that kind of uncomfortable feeling that you're like, mm, this doesn't feel right. So maybe that's a way to be able to tell. Huh? Are you happy? Just be the way you are. Or are you feeling uncomfortable trying to fit in? But that's such a fantastic question. Thank you. Other okay. questions? Josephine, you're there? Okay, great. Yeah. Okay, I'm here. So uh, we have somebody, okay, I think this is a takeaway uh, from Nana. Okay, so uh, Benjamin, Benjamin says, my question is, Pursuing your passion, what are some personal challenges you encountered and how did you overcome them? Pursuing your passion, what are yeah. some personal challenges you encountered and how did you overcome them? Okay. So so one of the passion, one of the challenges I encountered in pursuing my passion is this, this challenge around wanting to earn more money. So when I was working for the, you know, my first job out of law school naturally was to work for a law firm and I was earning some good amount of money and I had to be in that job because I had debt. I had taken out loans to go to university and law school. And when I finished, you know, I really worked hard to pay off those loans. Huh? And so that was the first challenge. I really wanted to be doing human rights work, but I had these loans to pay. Now, the way I overcame that was I stayed focused. I tried to pay more than was required each month. And so as soon as I finished paying off my debt, I immediately went to do what I really wanted to do. So that was one challenge. The second challenge I had was many people will try and advise you against your passion. They'll say, ah, how can you leave such a good job to now do this other thing? That thing is paying you so well. So there've been many moments I've had to get very clear. There's nothing wrong with getting advice from others, but you need to know yourself and get very clear on what is it I really want? What is the difference I really want to make? What is the path for me? So that has been a big way for me to over challenge all these noises of people trying to give me advice and give me advice to take me in a direction that does not work for me by getting very clear on what matters to me. But thank you for that question. Huh? Thank you, Taka. I think for AO, uh, he has, uh, I think, something that he's taking away. He said, failure is not the opposite of success, but a path to success by Taka. And that he says, thank you, Taka. Um, Benjamin says, thank you for the presentation. Uh, Jaden also says, thank you. Okay, so we have another question uh, coming from Betty. Um, the question she's asking is, can you have two careers at the same time? Oh, definitely, definitely. Increasingly, I will have people who may be, you know, for instance, I know some people who might be working full time day-to-day -day in a job in a bank or in a telecom, then at the same time, they might have a side business doing something else. So increasingly, we don't even talk about careers. We talk about income streams. We talk about doing different things that drive your passion. So yes, definitely, you could have different things going at the same time. And by the way, the beauty also of the virtual working is that increasingly, Work is no longer where you go. Work is something that you do because we're moving to a time where work is an office that you go to with virtual working. Increasingly, work is something that you can do from absolutely anywhere. That means you can be doing different jobs at different times. So excellent okay. question, thank you. Thank you very much, Taka. Before we go on, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of two key people uh, in our midst. We have uh, in the person of our MD, Olumide, uh, he's online. Uh, we also have Steven Aban, who happens to be the divisional head of retail banking. You're all welcome. Thank you. 
Okay, so I think the next question is, uh, this is coming from Jaden as well. Uh, my question is on pursuing your goals. How did you overcome all the challenges you encountered? You know, it's, it's about focus. It's about being clear about what you want and not being discouraged when you don't get there immediately. What I have realized is that the path to my goal has rarely been a straight path. It's been often a windy one, up, down, around the corner. Huh? But as long as I stayed focused on where I was going, when I had a detour, when I had a fall, it was about saying, mm, how can I learn from this to get better? So that was one, staying focused. The second is enjoying the journey. You know, we can get so focused on our goals. I gotta do this, I gotta do this, I could achieve this. But we forget that the journey is equally and can be equally enjoyable. The people you walk with along that journey, the lessons you learn along that journey. So I've also had to learn not to take myself too seriously, eh? to also have a laugh at myself and say, okay, so I tried this, it didn't work. Let me try something else. So staying focused, you know, recognizing that it's a windy journey, picking myself up if I fell down and having fun along the way. Thank you for that question, Jaden. Thank you, Taka. Okay, so we also have our COO in the person of Ade Olugun on the line. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Okay, so I uh, would we'll move on to, okay, I think we have two people uh, raising their hands. We have Kendra and then we have Edward. Uh, from your video. Um, I think we can have Kendra. Kendra, can we have your question? You can unmute your microphone and ask your question, please. Okay, as we wait for Kendra to ask uh, her question, probably we can have... Okay, we have Kendra. Kendra, what's your question? Um, sorry, I didn't mean to raise my hand up. I just okay, that's fine. That's fine, Kendra. If you have anything to say, you can use the chat box, okay? So uh, okay. if we can have the question coming from Edward. If you have a lot of passions and you want to do them at the same time, how do you do it? Okay, Taka, I hope you got that. So that was Edward, eh? Yes. Was asking if you have a lot of passions and you want to do them at the same time, how do you do it, eh? Yes, exactly. Okay, Edward, thank you for that question. I would say, it, you know, focus is also important. So it might be difficult to do too many things at the same time. So Edward, look for where you see opportunities to move fast. You know, sometimes... And what I mean by an opportunity is there may be an opening to move in one direction more so than the other. Or you may find one thing is easier to start than the other. So rather than trying to do everything at the same time, it's better if you only have a few things going just so you can do those well. Edward, see for though to determine which of those should you move further than others, Again, look for the opportunities, look for the openings, look for what might be easiest to move forward first, look for where you might have additional support to move forward. And of course, the advice and support of your parents, your teachers, your uncles and aunts is also, also useful in knowing what to take forward first. Eh? But Edward, it may be difficult to do everything at the same time. Thank you for that question. Okay, so uh, we have a question from, okay, so uh, my question is how to cultivate the habit of savings. I, nice. I can support you with that, Taka. Oh, please do. This is your yeah, area. <laughs> so one of the best ways and easiest ways is to open, tell mommy or daddy to open an Access Bank Early Savers account for you, okay? Um, join the Access Bank Early Savers Club where you get to have a piggy bank 
So all the monies that you get, whether it is it is allowances, weekly allowances for mommy or daddy, or uh, I know sometimes you do mini, mini house chores and mommy or daddy gets to reward you with some form of stipend. You, you Everything that you have, you just put it into your piggy bank. And once it gets full, just drag mommy or daddy to take you straight to any of the access bank locations and then deposit it into your early savers account. And definitely there will be interest on the account and you'll be accumulating more money. And another way is also to join the early savers promo where you have cash rewards. So the more you deposit, the more you win points. And eventually, if you are lucky, you get to win a substantial amount and you can add it to your savings account. Mm -hmm. So that 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 is it. Uh, we have another question that says, please, if my parents are against my passion, what do I do? Mm, what a beautiful who was that from? What a beautiful question. I think that's from Benjamin. Benjamin, thank you. Um, I think this is time to really start talking to mommy and daddy and be in conversation with mommy and daddy. I would do a little research, Benjamin, to find out, because usually what I hear is often parents are against passions because they are worried, they love you, and they are worried about how will you make a living on your passion. So Benjamin, do a little research, get online safely, huh? to check who are people who have succeeded yeah, with that particular passion and continue in conversation with mommy and daddy about this. Huh? But I would say for now, continue to study hard, continue to really develop your character because your passion, your passion without the character is also a problem huh? because I have known people who followed their passion, but they're not disciplined. I've known people who followed their passion, but they're not respectful. They don't know how to work with others. So that can also be a problem. So Benjamin, continue to work on your attitude, your character, your emotional intelligence, while you do your research on those who have had careers with that passion and continue talking to mommy and daddy about that. Thank you, brilliant question. Okay, thank you, Taka. Uh, Taka. So, um, okay, uh, Christian, I think this is just a comment from Christian Kofi. He says, uh, when my parents were against mine, I had my pastor talk to them for me. Okay. Nice one. So Very nice. Suggestion. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, Benjamin also said, when my parents were against mine, okay, it's, it's the same. He also had his pastor also talk to them. So these two same comments. Oh, okay. Are coming from Benjamin and Christian. Benjamin says, okay, thank you. I think it's in response to uh, the contribution that Christian made. Okay. Um, let me see. Uh, Benjamin said, I'd like to add a saying in that one can be a jack of all trades and master of none. We should yes. have this in mind. Okay. So this is coming from Joseph. Joseph says, how can I save as a child since I do not work? Ah, I think you just gave a wonderful idea, huh? Exactly. It's, it's, you know, some of us, you may not work, of course, because you have to focus on your education, but some of you get little uh, amounts, allowances from helping out around the house. Huh? And one thing I would have added to the point you made about putting it in the piggy bank is also about, you know, sometimes you do want to enjoy those little amounts that you're given. Huh? So yes, enjoy, but always don't enjoy all get in the habit of always leaving some aside because eventually when you start to have a salary, yes, you're going to have to need to use some of your salary, some of your business earnings to live on, to pay your rent, your mortgage, to eat, but it's being in the habit of always keeping some aside in an account so that that grows. Okay. Thank so, um, I think we take we take about three more questions and then uh, wow. uh, that would be a wrap. Um, sure. We have Sh Sean. Sean saying, uh, please, how do I discover my passion? Ooh, lovely question, Sean. Sean, start paying attention to what you really enjoy doing. Just notice, is it, do I really like um, playing my musical instrument? Do I really like solving numbers properly? Do I really like um, the drama class? So pay attention to what you really enjoy doing. That's one. The second is start to notice people who have careers that you think, oh, that looks interesting. I wouldn't mind doing that. And start exploring what is it 
about what they are doing that you would like doing. So you may notice some of your uncles, your aunties, maybe mommy or daddy is doing something. You're like, hmm, I think I wouldn't mind doing that when I grow up. Pay attention to that. Maybe there's something about what they're doing that's showing you where your passion is. But your passion is about those things you absolutely so love to do. You would do it even if you didn't get paid. The way I love what I'm doing. Thank you for that Thank question. You, Thank you. So Jaden said, Taka, what helped you to get to this point in your life? Oh, so many things. My goodness. That's a wonderful question, Jaden. And, and let me throw in very quickly some of the many things. One, belief in myself. Belief in myself. And I haven't always had those beliefs in myself. Huh? There have been moments where I've really questioned myself. Can I really do this? But I noticed the more I believe in this myself, the more I'm able to achieve my goals despite obstacles. Belief in God, my faith, you know, that grounding and not faith just in a religious sense, but really getting to know God at a personal level. That's been key. My support network, my family, my friends, this is where I am today is not a product of Taka alone. Where I am today is a product of a whole community of people who are there for me. So as much as possible, I try and do the same for others. Um, hard work, my dears, hard work. Nobody can ever underestimate hard work. I don't think I'd be where I was today if I wasn't willing to do hard work. But it didn't feel like hard work because guess what? I was following my passion. So thank you for the questions, Jaden. That was just some of the things that came to mind. Okay, so I think this will be our last question. It says, uh, as a kid, should I aim at having a huge salary for my first job? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, not necessarily. No, not at all necessarily. Um, aim for following your passion. Aim for doing what you can do and doing it really well but seize any opportunity that comes because not all of us may have opportunities to follow our passion. So if a job comes, don't go, ah, it's not my passion, so I'm not going to do it. Jump at it, excel. It may be your stepping stone to your eventual passion. So seize what comes, take what comes, huh? even if it's not your passion, but if it is your passion, run with it. Was oh, that the last one? Thank Oh, these have been yes, that was the last one. <laughs> absolutely fantastic questions. Thank you so much to our children for these very thoughtful questions. And thank you so much, Taka. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I believe that uh, we are all going away uh, with, with some key information. Um, if not for anything, at least the five things that we learned, you have to be yourself. You have to follow your passion. Um, your education will get you to the door, but it's your attitude that will keep you in. So it's very, very important that we work on our character. Uh, we need to listen to mommy, daddy, and all the people working to develop our character. Uh, wealth is not gained from earnings. It is gained from savings. That is why it is not too late to have an early savers account. And if you already have an early savers account, you have to do well to start saving from now. Um, no amount is too little and no matter what it takes, it's just the habit that is very important. So we need to inculcate um, a very good savings habit. Uh, this is the first of about five more seminars for us to have. Uh, let me put it that way. We are going to have this seminars first week of every month. So if you're on the line, please take note and always, uh, um, invite others to join in. Links will be shared when the time is up. Since this is your first time, next time you get to invite another family or another friend just to be part of this journey. Um, like I also said initially, the early service promo comes in two main ways. Uh, the first one is the more you deposit, the more you build points. So it's a points build up system. And then the other thing has to do with the fact that it is very fun and very, very engaging. We have a lot of activities uh, currently ongoing. You should visit our website, um, which is www.accessbank.com um, slash early savers. 
we have the Access Got Talent Hunt. This is a platform for all the children to display their talent in monthly contests and definitely cash rewards as well. And it happens every third Friday of the month. We also have the Friday monthly jams. It is a virtual party where we get to entertain our early savers. So it's very important that you join every last Friday of the month. And we also have our Quiz Sunday competition. This is a quiz challenge available on our USSD platform, which is star 901. Every child can participate in it and win rewards. And this is also held every Sunday. So we'd like to encourage all parents that please participate in these activities with your kids and then get to teach them, you know, from the ethics that they, 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 they get through the various engagements. You get to instill them uh, every day as part of the learnings that they get to learn from you. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you. It's a pleasure having you. And we would definitely uh, meet again same time next month. Um, some of the topics that we, we, like I said, we have about four more. We are going to talk about how to protect, you know, how to save, how to protect your savings, thereby giving your savings security, uh, how to uh, come up polished, you know, as a young uh, 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 person, as an early saver. We have interesting topics that we are definitely going to um with you, we get to learn and we get to develop healthy financial habits as well as um, skills that will help us in this life. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you, parents. Thank you, our early savers. If you don't have an early savers account, let my for you immediately. And Taka, you can't say thank you enough. It was a pleasure oh, having you. Thank you welcome. so much. Thank welcome. you, everybody. Yeah. I think we we'll, we'll, would we'll end this 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 meeting uh, with a prayer. Uh, I'd like to call on Grace Grace Jani to definitely we started with the prayer, so it's ideal we end. With okay, a thank so thank Grace, you very much. Let's pray please. with us. Uh, okay, so please let's pray. Jehovah God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for bringing these wonderful children and parents together for us to have a very good and interactive session. We thank you for all the things that you have taught us today. We pray that you help our children to be able to use these things to impact greatly on their lives. We also pray committing our young ones into your care that as they grow, you help them to grow in your understanding and in your knowledge so that they'll be able to use everything that they have learned here. We also pray Thanking you for the lives of all these children and their parents. Thank you for the lives of our facilitator, Taka, for taking time off her busy schedule to give us such an interesting topic. We pray that wherever we find ourselves, we'll be able to use all these things. Thank you so much. And we ask you this through Jesus Christ's name. We bye bye. Hey, 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 amen, amen. amen. Okay, bye. Bye, bye. everybody. Bye. Amen, amen. Bye bye. 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 Thank <laughs> you.